from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hi everybody, we're back in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the MIT Chief Data Officer Information Quality event, hashtag MIT CDO IQ. And I'm Dave Vellante, he's Paul Gillen, Day one of our two day coverage of this event. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Joe Caserta is here, he's the president of, of Caserta, and Doug Laney, who is principal data strategist at Caserta. Both CUBE alum, guys, great to see you again. Good to see you, so you Joe, when did you pick up this guy? How did that all happen? <laughs> so Doug, you came on here a couple years ago, we had a great conversation, read the book, loved yeah. it, so congratulations, yeah. a nice pickup. We're very Thanks. fortunate to have him. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm fortunate to be here. So, okay, well, what attracted you to Caserto? Well, uh, Joe's got a tremendous reputation. His, his uh, team of consultants has a great reputation. Um, we both felt there was an opportunity to build some uh, data strategy competency uh, on top of that and leverage some of those infonomics ideas that I've, I've been uh, working on over the years. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, congratulations. And, and so, Joe, you and I have talked uh, many times, and the reason I like talking to you is because you know what's going on in the marketplace. You could, you could you know, siphon what's real, what's hype. So what are you seeing as the big trends in this data space? And then we'll get into it. Yeah, sure. Um, the trends are, the, the chief data officer, right, has been evolving over the last couple of years. You know, when we started doing this several years ago, there was just a handful of people, maybe 30, 40 people. Now there's 450 people here today. And it's been evolving. People are tr still trying to find their feet exactly what the chief data officer should be doing, where they are in the hierarchy, should they report to the CEO, the CIO, the, mm -hmm. you know, the other CDO, which is a t digital officer. So I think, you know, hierarchically they're still figuring it out, uh, politically they're figuring it out, but technically also they're still trying to figure it out. You know, um, what's been happening over the past few years is the evolution of data going from traditional data warehousing and business intelligence to get insight out of data uh, just isn't working anymore. Uh, so ev evolving that, moving it forward to more modern data engineering, uh, we've been doing for the past couple of years with quote unquote big data. Uh, and, and that's not working anymore either, right? Because it's been evolving so fast. Um, so now we're on like maybe data 3.0 and now we're talking about just pure automate everything, we have mm -hmm. to automate everything. And we have to change our mindset from, from having output of a data solution to an outcome to a data solution. And that's why I hired Doug, because we have to figure out like, not only how to like, get this data and look at it and analyze, but really how to monetize it. Mm -hmm. right? It's becoming a revenue stream for your business if you're doing it right. And, and Doug is the leader in the industry on how to figure that out. Well, you know, key, key premise of your book was you got to start valuing data, I and mean, it's fundamental, and you right. put forth a number of approaches and techniques and examples of companies mm -hmm. doing that. Since you've published Infonomics, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook are the top five market value companies. They've surpassed all the financial services guys, all the Exxon Mobiles, and, mm -hmm. and, and any manufacturer, automobile makers, and what are they? They're, they're data companies. Right, absolutely, 100%. <coughs> but are we, intrinsically, we know there's value there, but right. are we, are we any, any closer to the pres prescription that you put forth in the book? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's really no surprise that actually we found that data companies have a market to book value that's nearly three times the market average. So Apple and others are much higher than that, but on average, if you look at the the data product companies, they're, they're valued much higher than other companies, probably because um, data can be reused in multiple ways. So that's one of the, the core tenets of Infonomics is that data is this non-depletable, regenerative, reusable asset. And that companies that get that and architect their businesses based on those economics of, of information um, can, can, can really perform well. And not just data companies, but any company. I mean, that was a key takeaway of the book, is yeah. that data doesn't conform to the laws of scarcity. Right. Everybody says data is the new oil. It's like, no, it's, it's not. It's more valuable. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, what are some examples? I mean, in, in, in writing your book and customers that you work with, where do you see companies outside of these big uh, data-driven firms uh, breaking new ground in uses of data? Do you want to share? 
I think the, the biggest opportunity is really not with the big giant companies. It's really with the small, you know, most of our most valuable clients are small companies with large volumes of data. Um, and, you know, if, and the reason why they can remain small companies with large volumes of data is the thing that holds back the big giant enterprises is they have so much technical debt. Mm. Um, it's very hard, they're like trying to, you know, race a Titanic, right? You mm. can't really, it's not agile enough. Mm. Um, you need something that's small and agile in order to pivot because it is changing so fast. Every time there's a solution created, it's obsolete and we have to create a new solution. And, um, and when you have big old processes, big old technologies, big old mindsets, and big old cultures, it's very hard to be agile. So is there no hope? I mean, the reason I asked the question was, what hope can you give some of these uh, you know, smokestack companies that they can become yeah. Data centric. Uh, yeah, what, one of the things we see to? is that uh, there was a there was a move to build big monolithic data warehouses years ago, and even data lakes. Um, and, and what we find is that looking through the the wealth of examples of companies that have benefited in significant ways from data and analytics, most of those solutions are very vocational. They're very functionally specific. They're not enterprise class yada yada kind of kind of projects, they're focused on a particular business problem or monetizing or leveraging data in a very specific way. And they're generating millions of dollars of value, but again, they tend to be very, very functionally specific. The other trend that we're seeing is also that, you know, the technology and the, and the end result of what you're doing with your data is one thing, but really in order to make that shift if you're a big enterprise is culture. Mm -hmm. To really change all of the people within the organization yep to migrate from being a conventionally wisdom run company to be a data real analytics driven company. And, um, and that takes a lot of change management, a lot of what we call data therapy. Mm -hmm. um, we actually launched a new practice within the organization that Doug is actually and I are collaborating on to really mature because that is the next wave is really, we figured out the data part, we figured out the technology part, but now it's the people part. The people part is really why we're not yeah. way ahead of where we, even though we're way ahead of where we were a couple years ago, we should be even further. But culturally, it's very, very challenging and we need to address that head on. And, and, and that's is that, is that a skills issue? That they're sort of locked into their existing skill sets and, and, and processes or is it? It's fear of the unknown, right? What, what we're doing, you know. What about FOMO? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there, I mean, the, there are people chomping at the bit to do this, right? So there is that part mm -hmm. and an exciting part of it, but there's also just fear, mm -hmm. you know, and, and fear of the unknown. And, mm -hmm. you know, part of what we're trying to do and why we're, you know, trying to, um, to, to push uh, Doug's book, not for sales, but really just to share the knowledge and remove the mystery and let people see what they can actually do with mm -hmm. this data. Yeah. Um, and it's more than just data literacy. So there's a lot of talk in the industry about data literacy programs right. and educating business people on the data and educating data people on the business. And, and that's obviously important, but what Joe's talking about is something bigger than that. It's really cultural and it's something um, that is, uh, is a change to the, the company's DNA. So where do you attack right. that problem? Does it have to go from the top down? You go in through the middle? It has to be from the top down. It has to be. Um, it has to be because my boss said to do it. Um, yeah. Right. Um, well, otherwise they well they, they might mm -hmm. do it, but the organization's not going to. Because do it, if right? you do it as a grassroots movement, only the folks who are excited, right, mm -hmm. the FOMO people, yeah. right, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are going to be excited, and they'll but they're going to evolve and adopt anyway, so, right? But it's the rest of the organization, and that needs to be a top-down um, approach. You and know, it's, it was interesting um, hearing this morning's keynote speakers. He's going to throwing top down under the bus, but I, I had the same reaction as you can't do it without that executive you know, buying in. Of course, we defined, I guess, in the session what that was. Amazon has an interesting concept for, for any initiative, like every initiative that's funded has to have what they call a threaded leader. Mm -hmm. In other words, some kind of, and if they don't, if they don't mm -hmm. have a threaded leader, there's like an incentive system to dime on the initiative, and yeah. kill it, right? Yeah. So, it kind of forces <coughs> top down, yeah. you know, buy-in. So, so when we interview our clients, uh, we have a litmus test. And the litmus, it's kind of a readiness test. Do you have the executive leadership to actually make this project successful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of cases they don't. And you know, we'll have to say, well, call right. us when you're ready. Um, yeah. you know, or, because one of the challenges, another part of the litmus test, is this IT driven? If it's IT driven, it's going to be very tough to, to get um, right. embraced by the rest of the business. 
Um, so we, we need to really be able to have that executive leadership from the business to say this is something that we need to do su to survive. Yeah, and, and you know, w with, without the top-down mm. support, you could play small ball, but if you're playing the Yankees, <laughs> you're not going to win. And one of the reasons why when it's IT driven it's very challenging is because the people part, right, is a different budget from the IT budget. And when we start talking about data therapy, right, and human resources and training and education of just culture and data literacy, which is not necessarily technical, um, that, that becomes a challenge internally on figuring out like how to pay for it and, and how to get it done uh, with the corporate politics. So, so the CDO crowd, I mean, definitely parts of your book that they should be adopting because to me their, their main job is, okay, how, how does data support the monetization of my organization, whether it's raising right. revenue, cutting costs, improving productivity, saving lives, mm -hmm. they call it value. Yes. And, and so that seems to be the starting point at the same time, and this conference you know, grew out of the ashes of, of the back room, information quality, and yeah. then yep. the big data hype, it exploded, and, and yep. we've kind of gone full circle. So, I, but, I, but I wonder, I mean, is, is the CDO crowd still focused on that monetization? Certainly, I think we all agree they should be, but are they getting sucked back into a governance role, or can they do both, I guess is my, is my question. Yeah. Well, governance has big, been a big issue the, the past few years with all of the, the new compliance regulations right. and, and a focus on, on, uh, on ensuring compliance with them. But um, there's often a, just a pendulum swing mm -hmm. back and I think there's a swing back to adding business value. Um, and and uh, so we're seeing a lot of opportunities to help companies monetize their data broadly in a variety of ways, as, as, as you mentioned, not just in, in one way. And um, th again, those do need to be driven from the top. We have a process that we go through to, to generate ideas, and that's wonderful. Generating ideas is, you know, is fairly straightforward enough, but then um, running them through kind of a feasibility assessment, starting with you have the uh, executive support for that. Is it techno technologically feasible, uh, managerially feasible, uh, ethically feasible, and so forth? So we kind of run them through that gauntlet next. Yeah. One of my concerns is that you know, your chief data officer, yeah. the, the level of involvement that she yeah. or he has in these digital initiatives, and, and you know, again, is the digital initiative a field of dreams? Maybe it is, but everywhere you go, the, the CEO is trying to get digital right. That's right. And it seems like the chief data officer is, is not necessarily front and center in those, certainly AI projects, yeah. which are skunk works, yeah. uh, but it's the chief digital officer that's, that's right. driving it. So how are, the, how are you seeing those roles play out? In, in the last panel that I just spoke in, a uh, very similar question was asked. Mm -hmm. And again, we're trying to figure out the hierarchy of where the CDO should live in an organization. Um, I, I find that the biggest place it fails typically is if it rolls up to a CIO. Right, if you think the data is a technical issue, you're wrong, right? Data is a business issue. Yeah. Um, and I, I also think for any company to survive today, they have to have a digital presence. And so digital presence is so tightly coupled to data that I find the best success is when the chief data officer reports directly to the chief digital officer. Mm -hmm. Chief digital officer has a vision for the user experience for the customer, the customer zella to figure out how do I get that customer engaged, mm -hmm. and and that directly is dependent on insight, right? On analytics, right? You know, if the four of us mm -hmm. were to open up any application on our phone, even for the same product, we would have four different experiences based on who we are, who our peers are, mm -hmm. what we've bought in the past. That's all based on analytics. So the business application of a digital presence is tightly coupled to analytics, which is driven by the chief data officer. That's the first time I've heard that, and I think that's the yeah. right organizational structure. I think yeah. the DIG, CDIG, is going to be sort of the driver right. of the strategy. That's where the budget's going to go, and the chief data officer is going to have that supporting role, which that's is right. vital. The enabler. Yeah. Do right. yeah. you think the chief data officer is a long-term play? Will we, will we have a lot of chief data officers still 10 years from now, or I, is this I think fizzle? data is not a fad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think data has just become more and more important, and will they, they ultimately leapfrog the chief mm -hmm. digital officer and to report to the CEO, maybe someday? But for now, I think that's where they belong. Yeah. You know, once companies started managing their labor and workforces as an actual asset, even though it's not a balance sheet asset for obvious reasons, 
um, in the 1960s, that gave rise to the Chief Human Resource Officer, which we still see today. And as companies start to recognize information as, a, as an asset, you need an executive leader to, to oversee and, and be responsible for that asset. Yeah. I mean, conceptually, it's always been data as an asset and a liability, and mm. you know, we've always thought about it in balanced yeah. terms. Your book sort of put forth a formula for actually formalizing That's right, that. measuring, yeah. Do you think it's going to happen in our lifetime? W what exactly? My, what my you, chips what are on you, it. What you put forth in your book <laughs> in terms of organizations actually valuing data specifically yeah. on the balance sheet. In uh, so that's an accounting question and, and one that, right. you know, that you would leave to the accounting professionals, but there have been uh, discussion papers published by the accounting standards bodies to discuss that issue. Mm -hmm. We're probably at least 10 years away, but um, I think irrespective of whether data is a, a balance sheet asset or not, it's, it's an imperative for organizations to behave as if it is one. And that was your point. Yeah. It's probably not going to happen, but you got to think right. in terms that you can understand the value because right. that's... Well, it, it comes back to you can't manage what you don't measure. And if right. you're not measuring mm -hmm. the value or potential value or quality of your information or what data you have, you're in a poor position to manage it like one. And if you're not managing it like an asset, then you're really not probably able to leverage it like one. All right, give us a little commercial for Caserta. <laughs> well, I do, I do want to say that I do think in our lifetime we will see it become an asset. Mm -hmm. I do, there are lots of intangible assets that are on the books, right. intellectual property, contracts, Mm -hmm. I think data yeah. that supports both of those things yeah. are equally as important, and they will, they will see the light. Yeah, why it, are those five companies mm -hmm. such a you know yeah, huge right. market cap winners? Where, you know, they've surpassed all the it's valuation assets. of a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. The the data that they have is considered right. right? So yeah. it should be part of an, the assets in the books. All right, we got to wrap. So, but give us <laughs> give us the the Caserta commercial. Well, Caserta is a, is a consultancy that does essentially three things. We do data advisory work, which, which Doug is heading up. We do data architecture and strategy, and we also do just implementation of solutions. Everything from data engineering, data architecture, and data science. Well, you made a good bet on data, Joe. Yeah, and great. Doug, thanks for coming yeah. on, you guys. Great, great to see you again. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank All right, you. and thank thanks you for, for watching. Us. That's a wrap on day one. Paul and I will be back tomorrow for day two at the MIT CDO, MIT CDO IQ. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.